one and a half million Iraqis are trying to build new lives for themselves in Syria, having fled from violence in Iraq. For 16-year-old Saif, who comes from a town north of Baghdad, the best thing about living in Damascus is not having to worry about rockets, landmines, or kidnappers. I'm Iraqi. I've been in Syria for two years. I came here because of the violence in Iraq. This place is so different from where I lived in Iraq. It's very busy, noisy and crowded here. What is good about here is that it's safe. We don't have anything here apart from safety. Like many refugee teenagers, Saif has had to drop out of school and abandon his plans to study to become an engineer. I work from 9, 9.30 till 1 or 2 in the morning. I'm the only one who can earn money for the family. Saif works seven days a week in the cafe. It's on a street known as Iraqi Street, because of the huge number of Iraqis who live in the area. I've now been working for a year and two months. Everyone who works here is Iraqi. I'm 16, another one is 17, and a third is 19. Everyone has to work here because the situation is so difficult in Iraq. We have to work like this. Saif would prefer to continue his education so he could get a better job in the future. But he has no choice. Daily, I earn 300 Syrian pounds. That's three pounds a day in English money. I work 17 hours for three pounds a day. When I'm paid, I give the money to my parents because I'm their only source of income. Many children are now the responsible wage earners in the family. Even when the parents can work and would like to work, they often can't find work. And it's, it's the children that are able to get the, the casual labor types of jobs. Safe's younger sisters do go to school here. But in Syria, pupils have to pass primary school exams before going on to secondary school. And Saif's 15-year-old sister, Hala, has refused to go to a primary school. Hala's mother feels she's wrong not to take the place she's been offered. From the beginning, I told her she should go to school. I told her, why don't you go with your sisters? But she said she didn't want to. She said, I'm going to be in a crowded class with 10 and 11-year-olds, and they would see me as big. But I told her you'll learn English and science, and you'll see the year will pass very quickly. But still, she wouldn't go. And that's why she stayed at home. Saif has happy memories of life in Iraq. Before the war, my life in Iraq was good. But after the start of the war, we all became afraid. We were scared of leaving our homes because you don't know when the next explosion might happen. The situation was so bad and it's still the same now. You never know when there'll be an explosion. One time when I was going home after school, someone tried to kidnap me. I was with my friends coming home from school. A car stopped on the road. Three people got out of the car and tried to kidnap me. I ran away to a neighbor's house and climbed from one roof to another until I got back home. The Americans came to Iraq saying they want to end the system of Saddam. 
But they wanted the oil and all the other resources. They ended the system, but the situation got worse. That's why I came here to Syria. Only a small minority of Iraqi teenagers do attend school here. So what's the experience of those that do? We spoke to a group of student refugees chosen for us by the head teacher of Saida Fifth School. Officials from the Syrian Ministries of Education and Information looked on. How did these young people feel having to leave home and come to another country? When I came to Syria, I felt like a stranger. I felt like I'd left my country and it was peculiar. My situation is similar. When I first came to Syria, I felt very out of place and I missed my country. I didn't want to leave. We arrived here not long ago. We didn't want to leave. All my relatives are in Iraq. But because of this situation, we had to and leave everything behind. These teenagers have all been given school places in what we would think of as a primary school. Most children start here at age six and leave at the age of 12, but you can stay on until you're 16. Our teenagers have no choice but to study with younger children if they're to get the exams they need to go on to secondary school. Having been uprooted from their homes in Iraq, this group is typical of young Iraqis here. They've missed a lot of school. I skipped one year's school and I was very angry about it. Because of what's going on in Iraq, I had to stop school. I feel like I've wasted my years. I'm supposed to be in year eight. In class, I feel that all the other students are younger than me. Going on to year eight would have been better for me. I would have been with students the same age. I feel the same way, but what can we do? We had to leave school because of the situation. I also should have been in year eight. What about you? We were sorry to leave Iraq. When we arrived here, we felt a big difference between us and our classmates. At this school, I feel and see myself as older than the other students. Everyone in my class is younger than me. If I hadn't skipped a year, this wouldn't have happened. What about you? Me too, but I feel like they're not my classmates. I feel older than them and I get really embarrassed. With government officials still in the room, we asked the group what they thought of the situation in Iraq. It's hard to know how typical their views are. We were very comfortable and felt safe before the war. When the Americans came, they caused problems in our country. Now there is no security in Baghdad. Nobody wants to go back to it. We are here for now, but once our residency permits run out, we will have to go back. When they arrived in Iraq, the Americans wanted our country and our country's wealth. They don't want Iraqis in an Iraqi country. They want it all to themselves. 
They wanted our wealth. Our country is the country of wealth. It's got everything. With or without our petrol, it's the country of wealth. Saddam did nothing wrong. He was protecting our country. He did nothing wrong. We used to believe what the Americans used to say, but that was all a lie. There was nothing wrong with him. It's the opposite. Saddam was so much better than them. It would be so much better if we could go back to our country, go back to our schools. That would be great. I hope that things will be safe again and that we can return to Iraq. Then we'll be able to go back to our work and our relatives. I hope for all these things, if God allows it. تثبت لنا بر الوالدين عند الأنبياء في كل الديانات الآن نخرج دفتر التربية الإسلامية نكتب التاريخ ونكتب هذا الملخص بخط جميل ومثل ما كتبت أنا بالضبط تفضلوا بخط جميل وبنفس الألوان التي اخترتها أنا So how do these teenagers see their future? All the group are thinking along the same lines I have been able to when I get older, I would like to open a clinic and heal the sick and help people. What would you like to be? We need a lot of doctors in the future. That's what I want to be. A doctor, a lawyer, anything that can help our country's future. I'd like to become a teacher and teach students how to read and write, teach them how to make friends. What about you? I want to become a lawyer to fight for people's rights and make my parents proud. For Saif, whose life now revolves around working for the cafe, there seems little chance of ever having the opportunity to qualify as an engineer. He was just 14 when he stopped going to school. I love learning English because I want to study in Europe. I love maths and hope one day I'll become an engineer. But the situation now is hopeless. My future is gone. I'm still young, but I feel that all I've got ahead of me is this kind of work. My life at school used to be really good, 100%. There's no better place to be than school. It's important, and it's the only way to guarantee a good future for Iraqis. I advise all teenagers who can to go to school.